Hello and welcome to another episode of Live Feed with your host, Richard Santiago. Live Feed is brought to you by Traveling Tech Teacher for all your digital resources. Check out TravelingTechTeacher.com. Also brought to you by TheBullyExposed.com, 501c3 nonprofit organization that reminds you to check out their YouTube channel at Nonfiction Filmmaker. This episode is also brought to you, how you doing, Pico? By Kick, uh, keep underscore keep it kind, Kick underscore keep it kind. That's K I K underscore keep it kind. Uh, we saw this um, four types of self care on their post. So we decided that we were going to too, do a little bit about that because you guys need to know about self care. And Pico joins us. Thank you, Pico, so much for joining us. I know it's super late where you're at in Japan right now, I believe. So thank you for taking time and joining us. Um, before I continue, Pico, how are things in Japan with uh, the COVID? I've been hearing from my friends that they're just coming out of a lockdown, I think. Uh, clear that up for me. Is this true? Uh, so I'm sure. Uh, Pico says, I'm good, sir. What about you? I'm real good. Thank you for asking. So, four types of self care. So, according to at uh, kick it underscore keep it kind, kick. Underscore keep it kind. Sorry about that. On Instagram, by the way, guys, there are four types of self care that you can do. So let's go through all those first, the four types. Number one is physical self care, mental self care, social self care, and spiritual self care. All right, so let's break those down a little bit more. Um, so physical, how, how, how can you physically care for yourself or physically do self-care? Well, you can get plenty of rest, all right? And that's Tully. Thank you, Tully, for joining us. I appreciate you guys joining us. Um, so you can get rest, okay? You can do yoga. And remember, when you do yoga, do it with E.C.'s, E.C. Kelly's Yoga Revolution. E.C. Kelly Yoga Revolution. Just simply go to YouTube, do a search for nonfiction filmmaker, and boom, you have found episodes, 50 episodes. We have just, I, I never made that announcement on the show, but I'm about to, guys. So please congratulate my crew, because uh, we've been working really hard on this episode. We have just completed 50 episodes of with the, the series we're calling Yoga Revolution or E.C. Kelly's Yoga Revolution. 50 episodes. We got more than that. I believe we got like 55 total episodes, but we have actually done 50 episodes. So, so please, whether you're watching this live or recording, smash that heart for the crew. They've been work, working really hard creating that that episode. We got... The, we got um, E.C. Kelly, who is the host. We got Giovanna McCurry, our friend from Australia, who's creating the music for it. And we got other guys that and girls that help out, the volunteer and help out. So I want to just stop and give them a shout out. I apologize. So let's continue. Before we continue, let's see. Tully says a great way to start self-care is don't do drugs. Yep. That is true. Stay clean in every way possible. All right. So I'm going to go back to that a little bit. So physical. So we said there are four types of self-care, right? Physical, mental, social, and spiritual. And uh, with those, you can, uh, a way to do physical self-care is rest, doing yoga with EC Yoga's uh, Yoga Revolution, eating right, taking walks, and getting, getting plenty of rest. For me, also, um, I think a, a good way to physically care for yourself as well is getting a haircut. Scarlett, thank you for joining the show. Getting a haircut, doing um, um, doing uh, massages, getting yourself massages, 
I think is a great physical way as well that I wanted to add to this list because it's stuff that I, that I personally do myself. Um, so let's move on. Also, mental. Right? Mental is a type of self-care. So how can you do that? Being kind. If you're kind to other people, that's, that's taking care of your mental. Well, it doesn't matter if the person's being mean. It doesn't matter if the person's trying to bully you. You, you do what you can to be kind. And you, you worry about your part on that. Um, having compassion is a good also way to take care of your mental self-care. Forgiving. Oh, there's a big one. Forgiving. Because like I told you, Okay. Sorry about that, guys. We... Something... Something happened. Uh, but I was saying to you guys about forgiveness. Forgiveness is a big one. Okay? Forgiveness is a big one. Because I told you guys about the Anakin Skywalker syndrome. Right? He, he hated the dark side so much. He hated everything that he went to being born a slave Anakin Skywalker. And he hated so much that he became that. Same thing happens if you don't forgive. If you don't forgive, you're not doing self-care. You're not doing mental self-care for yourself. If you, if you continue to um, not forgive. So forgiving is important. Okay, so you got to remember to continue, continue to forgive. Kaylee Jenkins, 27, thank you for joining the show. All right, so another way to uh, do mental self-care is by em emotional maturity. I think that's important. Um, you got to continue to uh, be mature emotionally, right? Understanding when to be upset, uh, understanding when to cry, even when to cry, you know, it's... There's just I'm sorry, but there are some times when it's not the proper time to cry. In other words, what is wrong with you or what's happening to you is not an issue for crying, in my opinion. And I think that's all about emotional uh, maturity. If you're playing games with friends and you want to play Monopoly and your friends want to play Pictionary... And they decide they're going to play Pictionary. That's not a time to cry. Sorry. So being emotionally mature is important. And managing stress. Knowing when to get out of stressful situations. Um, is very important, I think, for mental self-care. All right. Let's move on to social uh, self-care. Spending time together with your family and friends. That's a great way for social uh, self-care. Using social media in a positive way, like we're, we're doing, to bring attention about bullying and workplace bullying. That's a great way for social self-care. Self -care. Make sure, making sure you have a great support team It also is important. You want to go with guys that'll stick with you. You know, I tell you guys all the time, my son makes fun of me, right? Uh, because my wife has tons of friends. Right? And I'll have one or two or three friends at any given time. I'm not the type of person that has an entourage of friends. And my son will make fun of me for that. And that's all part of that. Making sure you have a great support team. You got guys behind you that are going to um, have your back for sure. Not make you wonder if you have your back. Uh, knowing your boundaries and ensuring others know their boundaries as well is an important uh, social self-care uh, type as well. So uh, let's see, let's move on. So spiritual self-care, what is, what is that? What does that entail? Well, that entails journaling, keeping track. You can do it with a video as well or, or, or audio. When I was bullied by the... Uh, United States Postal Service. I used to keep an audio uh, journal of every of all the abuse that was going on. So journaling, journaling is really really good for seeing how you how you grow. I remember when I used to eat meat. 
uh, I don't know, seven years ago. I actually, this is, I didn't mean for this to be a journal, but it ended up being a journal. I actually created a post on my Facebook account that said, you know, I haven't had meat in a while, and uh, SK, thank you for joining us. And I haven't had meat in a while, and uh, I'm feeling great, but I don't think I could ever give up meat. That's exactly what I said. So and then years later, that popped up on my Facebook account, and I thought to myself, wow, you know, I said, I don't think I could ever give up meat. Here I am six years later, have not eaten meat. Uh, so journaling is a good way to, to watching yourself grow. So when you do spiritual self-care, um, by journaling, I think I think it's very important. And if you're just joining us, like SK is, uh, we are talking about the four types of self-care. And let me go through just the four types real quick. Physical, mental, social, and spiritual. And right now we're on spiritual. SK, can you give me an update on yesterday's game, because I didn't watch the whole thing because it was late. Uh, I think I got to the fourth inning last I, um It was one. It was um, one nothing when I when I went to sleep yesterday. So SK says uh, the Yankees beat the Red Sox. Oh, good, good, awesome. And Christy one M N Z. Thank you for joining the show. So all right. So other ways to do spiritual self-care is connecting with nature, going out and taking nice long walks in the woods. Uh, just make sure you know where you're going so you don't get lost. Stay on the trails always. Pico's back. Thank you, Pico. I'm, I apologize for that. If you guys were watching, I don't know what happened. We, we got disconnected from our live feed and then reconnected like, 40 seconds later, and that's a long time in, in television and in radio, so I do apologize for that. Okay, so let's continue to go on. Another way to connect spiritually with self-care is uh, by doing yoga. And remember, do your yoga with one of our sponsors, E.C. Kelly's Yoga Revolution. Just simply go to YouTube, type in non-fiction filmmaker, Go to their playlist and then click on the Yoga Revolution playlist and you're doing yoga. It's that simple. Also, another way to connect is with uh, meditation. And again, when you choose to meditate, choose E.C. Kelly's Yoga Revolution to meditate as well. They're one of our sponsors. So if you support us, you... Uh, you, you please support them, and if you support them, you're supporting us. So it's it's a great circle of life there. So uh, let's see. Spending time alone with yourself is also another way for spiritual self-care, and I think it's very, very important, uh, spiritual self-care. Um, as Kate says, I think uh, best self-care is exercising. Thank you, Um Pico for mentioning that. Yeah, that wasn't part of, uh, we're, by the way, if you're just tuning in, we're reading off a list, and I'm adding some of my things that I like on it, but we're reading off a list from kick underscore keep it, uh, keep it kind on YouTube. Uh, excuse me. She's on YouTube as well, yes, but on Instagram. Uh, and yes, so go back to physical. Yes, exercising is definitely a physical way to do self-care. So thank you very much, SK, for that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So um, so we went through that. So let me go through it again just to kind of recap. So we found out in this episode that there are four types of self-care, right? Physical, mental, social, and spiritual. Right in physical self care, like SK said, there's exercising, there's rest, getting rest, doing yoga with EC Yoga, um, EC Kelly's Yoga Revolution, eating right, taking walks, getting plenty of sleep. That's a good way for physical. And I also added getting massages as well, uh, getting haircuts. That's a physical way to care for yourself. When you look good, you're happy. So when your bully comes and tries to uh, make you feel sad, 
you, you, you don't have to worry about it because you, you're feeling good inside. You're feeling good outside because you look good. So it keeps you able to get over uh, your bully's bullying. Uh, mental uh, self-care is uh, being kind to yourself, being kind to others, right? Having compassion, having forgiveness, emotional maturity, and managing stress by getting the people out of your life that bring you stress. Okay, so social. What what to wait for social self-care? Spending time with your friends and family, using social media in a positive way like the Bully Exposed is doing by having this great show called Live Feed. Uh, making sure you have a great support system. Like I said, surround yourself with people who support you, that back you up 100%, not that are going to let you down uh, when your back is turned. Uh, knowing your boundaries and ensuring others know them too. That's very important. Don't be afraid to tell a friend, hey, don't do that. I'll tell you guys a story. One time I was uh, hanging out with a friend and uh, we were... This is when I was in the union with the United States Postal Service, and we were supposed to get together to do some union stuff. I mean, we did get together to do some union stuff. And I was, I haven't seen the guy in a while, so I was so excited to see him. And I said, yo, bro, what's, what's up? And he didn't like that. And he said, don't call me bro. Call me by my name. Always call me by my name. I didn't get insulted. I didn't get hurt. I respected that. And he, he did just that one that we talked about. Uh, know your boundaries and ensure that others know them too. So he knew, he explained his boundaries to me, explained how I crossed over the boundaries and to, so he made sure that I knew also. There's nothing wrong with that. If someone doesn't want to be your friend simply because you said, hey, do me a favor, or, you know, he didn't say do me a favor, but because you say, hey, you, you know, I don't like you calling me bro, Call me by my name all the time. If you lose that friend, that friend was worth losing. Believe me. Okay. Spiritual uh, self-care. So, journaling, right? It could be with a video. You know, to me, if you got a phone, you should be journaling every day. Or either by the voice memos app in your phone. I think every phone has one. Or the video. Yeah, everyone has a camera. Every That I know. So, take that video. Point it towards you. And just start talking about your stuff. You will see how much you grow over years and mature over years. Uh, what else did we say here? Connecting with nature, taking nice own walks in the park, right? Doing yoga with E.C. Kelly's Yoga Revolution. Doing meditation with guess who? Say it with me, guys. E.C. Kelly's Yoga Revolution on, um, on YouTube at Nonfiction Filmmaker. So remember that guy. Spending time alone. I do that a lot. When my wife goes to work and my son goes to school and I don't have any work to do, or it, this might be before I do start my work, I make sure that I spend some alone time by myself. So that that's something that I do. So let's see. Pico says that he does weightlifting. Okay, yes, that's another physical way. Thank you, guys. That's, a, um, that's one that I didn't think of. That's one uh, kick. Keep it kind, didn't think of. And I want to give a shout out. Guys, check out uh, Kick, Keep It Kind uh, and on YouTube. That's K-I-K underscore Keep It Kind. Uh, check them out on YouTube. They got a lot of great posts that they put up, just like we do. We put up a lot of great posts, and so do they. So, do they. so physical, a good way for physical care is weightlifting. Yes, I, when I was 15 years old, I started weightlifting. I started weightlifting with a guy who wanted to be Mr. Universe. So you can imagine how, I don't want to use the word stressful because it wasn't stressful, but how demanding it was because I had to keep my mind going good because here I am working out with a guy who wants to be Mr. Universe. You know what I'm saying? Uh, even though I had no desire to be Mr. Universe, he did. And I think that was a great motivator for me because I didn't want to screw up. I wanted to do things right. And as long as you don't turn that 
wanting to do things right, not wanting to mess up and to stress, everything is cool. And I was able to do that uh, because I cared enough so that I wouldn't make mistakes, but I didn't care enough to where thinking about those mistakes turned into stress for me. And that's how we should live our life. And Pico says uh, he's power lifting 150 kilograms. Okay, give me a second, Pico. Let me convert that for all the uh, Americans out there. Uh, 100, uh, convert 150 kg. You think I would know this by now living in, in, um, living here in, oh, or convert, I didn't tell her what to convert it to, silly me, two pounds, there we go. <laughs> Uh, that's three, 350 pounds. Wow, dude, that's good. But uh, yeah, 15 years old, I, I started weightlifting and I did it all the way to probably about 20 and then I stopped. And even I can tell you right now, like when I was, I can remember when I was 20 and 21. I mean, excuse me, I stopped at 20. I can remember when I was 23 People were still saying to me, do you work out? You got a nice bod, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, if if you work out and you stick to it, uh, people long after you stop will be saying uh, you got a nice body. Uh, Marshall, thank you for joining the show. We do have a question. Thank you for starting the question. Uh, Running. Great. Thank you, guys. Yes. Walking was one of the the things for physical self-care. Running, that's right. I know a lot of people that run. Uh, lots of people. Thank you, SK. You guys are doing a great job. Keep them coming. If you remember a spiritual one, if you remember a social one, or even a mental uh, one, let me know. So we can keep adding them uh, to the list. Uh, but yeah, definitely. Running, walking, uh all that, all that can help as, as self-care. And even if you think of a fifth type of self-care, I would love for you to write it in the comments. If you if you think, wait, you guys left out a whole category of self-care, uh, let us know. Let us know for sure. And you know what? I just want everyone to know, because I know there's people that are in different religions and some people that don't believe in God as well. In, uh, in God as well, and that's quite all right. So when we say spiritual, we don't mean God. Just let you know that there's a way to be spiritual without thinking of religion or anything else like that. Like I said. Um, so let's see. So yeah, very very good, very good. Um, I'm so, I'm so glad that you guys were thinking of things. Let's see, I'm trying to get more people into the show. So there we go. All right. Um, so that's it. That's it. And, and and like I said, this is brought to us again by kick it underscore keep it kind on Instagram. So, you know, give them a little shout out. Maybe check out some of their posts and... Uh, I, what I would like is if you watch this show, go to their, um, go to their account, look at their feed, maybe like three three of their uh, posts, and if you want to follow them, you should follow them. It's it's you know if you're an advocate or a person that's been bullied, you should definitely follow others that are helping in that and support them. Uh, because, like me, I don't get paid for this, guys. I come in as on the show as often as I can. I create, I use my graphic skills to create uh, post for uh, this account. And I don't get paid for any of it. It's all volunteer work. So, um, and I believe they have a lot of volunteers too. So, show them some support by smashing that heart on some of their uh, things that they got going on. So yesterday I was very happy. I don't know what happened. I found myself a, a Yankee game, uh, and I got to watch uh, the Yankees for probably about four 
innings. It was great, but and then it was super late. And this is what I mean, guys. You know, it's hard for me to follow American sports living all the way out in Italy. So, um, but it was good to watch, even if it was for that long. And as Kate says, burpees and leg exercises. Yeah, I think that all that goes under exercise that you said, uh, SK. I think when you said exercise, you kind of covered burpees and, and leg exercises. But we can go into more detail and and, and do that by uh, naming certain um, exercises that we can do. For me, as you guys know, it's, it's, it's yoga. I mean, if you really keep... If you, if you don't rest, you know, a lot of people think yoga is about rest. If you just go from one move to another, to another, to another for about an hour without any rest, um, yoga is very intense. I have sweated just as much playing yoga as I did playing basketball or playing baseball or something of that nature. I know for those of you that are wondering, I'm not any good in, ba in basketball, so I can barely dribble the ball. But... To go out there and get exercise, I'll definitely play some hoops with some friends that are in the same, uh, what is it, are in the same uh, skill level as me. <laughs> That's a good way. I, I find it very boring to play uh, with guys that are like NBA, um, you know, because I have friends that used to play, what is it called? Is it called, what's the NBA that... The triple A version of, of NBA. I think it's called the D League. So I've had friends who played in the D League and it's no fun playing basketball with them. They they basically take the ball right from you no matter what you do. <laughs> I find I always I, I always travel and uh and do um and always following my friends because that's the only way <laughs> I can get the ball. Um so yes, SK says, yeah, D-League. I forgot for a minute, but yeah, it's called the D-League. Um, so, you know, that's self-care is important. I always tell you guys that we haven't talked about self-care in a while. That's why I decided to do this, you know, getting a, a simply getting a haircut. You know, like you guys can see, I did a little shave today. That's self-care right there. You know, self-care. That's a simple. In a couple of days, I'm going to take my son... To get a haircut, so he's doing self care for himself. Uh, Pico's doing fencing. That's right. Uh, Pico does fencing. There's self care, right there for yourself. Even you know self care. Even I mean, I was going to say caring of animals. Um, I guess not the caring of animals, but when you sit down with your animal, like you guys know, I give my dogs massages. Um, I've given birds massages. I know Pico has several birds, and I've given them massages. I put them on my lap uh, and rub their their chest or rub the back of their heads. Uh, when I used to have birds like the ones Pico has. And uh, that's self-care for you. I know you're like, well, you're giving the bird a massage, or you're giving the dog a massage. No, when you pet an animal, or even, I know this may sound weird, uh, I'm going to use it for lack of a better word, but when you pet another human being, you know, or I guess we don't call it pet, we, we call it rubbing or caressing another human being, you're, you're opening up things in your body as well. I forget what they call uh, hormones or something, or pheromones or I don't know what they're called uh, but you're opening those things up in your body too when you give another creature I'm going to use that word a massage or when you caress another creature so that in that aspect is self-care I mean if you're caring for an animal like um, uh, you're giving it a bath maybe that might not be considered self-care but I know if you have an animal like I've had birds that were very young, so you um, so you want them to get to to accustom to you. So you feed them uh, with a syringe. That was very 
calming and relaxing for me, even though I was trying to keep this animal alive, right? So there's many ways, many, 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 many ways. Uh, so Pico says, have you ever gone to ground zero? All right, Pico, let me see if I could answer that question. Hold on one second. I'm going to see if I still have that photo. The other day, I was looking on my YouTube for those pictures that I told you guys that I took. I took pictures. I went to 9-11 a year. I mean, excuse me, not a year. Um, a month after it occurred. Just when they opened everything up. And uh, and I found one picture on my, on my Instagram. I mean, excuse me, on my Facebook account. And I put it in my phone. And there it is. Okay. That is a picture uh, that I took when uh, I was at 9-11 uh, after the memorial was built. But I did go, like I said, after. I have not been able to find the pictures when I went a month after it, it occurred. I wish I could find those. You can see there was some, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There was some stores that had soot in the in the windows and I took pictures of that and I know so that some and I'd be interested to know some restaurants I mean not restaurants some department stores said that they were going to keep uh, the display the, exactly the way it is so no one ever forgets 9-11 with the sit on it and and everything that we're going to keep it like that I'm curious to know if years later they're still having them so yes I've been to ground zero a month after it occurred, to answer the question, and then I went back for when the memorial was built, and this is a shot I took uh, with the memorial, and I even stayed, I wish that I could find those pictures, I even stayed in a hotel right over the, overlooking the memorial. Uh, so from the uh, balcony that we were staying in, you can see, you can see, you look down and look right into the, to the memorial. Uh, so yes, um, to answer that question. Oh, SK says he went yesterday. Well, good for you. Is that the first time you went, SK, or have you gone before? Uh, let's see. And Tully's on. Oh, I'm sorry, Tully. I didn't see you get on. Uh, welcome, Tully, for joining the show. Encouraging people to make the right decisions. Encouraging people to make the right decisions. Spiritual Self-care, yes. Yes, I will agree with you, uh, Tully. Encouraging people to make the right decisions does fall under um, spending time with yourself. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. That falls under social. I apologize. My fault. What you just said falls under social. Spending time with friends and family, uh, using your social media in a positive way, having a great support system, and knowing the boundaries and ensuring that others know the boundary, your boundaries is part of social care. So, yes. Uh, okay, and SK says, no, he's been there for a third time. Yeah, very, very interesting. Yeah, good question, though. Thank you. Thank you, SK, for asking that. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, 9-11, I lost some friends, so definitely... And it's and it's the city where I was born in, you know. City where I was born in, so I gotta I gotta go, give it some props. You know, I wanted to let you guys know that we're some future shows that we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna talk about understanding stalking, okay, and we're gonna talk about how something soft can still penetrate, penetrate like stone. Uh, can still penetrate a stone, excuse me. Uh, so we'll be talking about that as well in the future, in future shows. Uh, SK says, have you ever been to the World Trade Center before? Yes. Uh, when I was 10, I went, and I, I lived in New York at that time, of course, you guys know. I left New York when I was 21 years old. Um, so, yeah, 10 years old. Um, then... I went back when my daughter was born. Uh, I can't, wow, well, I'm a bad dad. I can't think of the year my daughter was born. Uh, right now, I can't think of it right now. 
Um, uh, let's see. 95, 90, 95, 96, I think my daughter was born. Um, so I, uh, I went back then with her, went also to the Empire State Building. Kind of did the touristy stuff with my daughter, you know, me and my daughter. Um, uh, what else? Uh, Statue of Liberty, ferry, the ferry, obviously, to go to Statue of Liberty. We did all that with my daughter. I think she... Was she 10 as well, or 11 maybe, 12 possibly? She's 26 years old now. So, um, so yes, I have been to the World Trade Center before. So, yeah, and I'm glad, I'm glad that I have. I'm glad I'm not, like, ever saying that. I've never seen the World Trade Center, you know. When I went to the World Trade Center, was when it was gone, that, that would be... A, a sad thing to say. A sad thing to say. So, um, so I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm happy for that. That I that I took my daughter, and I almost did because I was like, "This is my daughter. I want to do touristy stuff," and I don't really like doing touristy stuff either. Even when I go to a country I've never been to before, like for instance, I'll give me a great example. So, yesterday we went to a city called Siena. And it's highly tourist city. There are a lot of Americans there. Uh, and it's really funny because you don't... For me, because of where I live in Italy, I don't hear English a lot. And if I do hear it, it's British English, you know, UK style of English. Or it's Italian English, you know, someone, someone Italian speaking English. I'm not used to hearing Americans... Uh, other than myself, because where I'm at, there are no other Americans, rare, rarely. Unless I go on, on to the post where my wife works and where I work. Um, so yesterday, I, we were at a tourist, uh, tourist spot. It wasn't as crowded uh, because of COVID, of course. Um, but I know that one day I'm going to go there and it's going to be highly populated. It's going to be hard to walk around in because people are there. And I just don't like that. I, I'd rather go with the natives wherever I go. You know, wherever I go, I want to be where the natives are, not where the tourist people are. It's good to go there, take some pictures, and go, and that's it. Uh, like when I went to Puerto Rico, I stood with my cousin, and then we did go to San Juan, which is a tourist spot. We went early, I took my pictures uh, with my camera, and then I was gone. Because I really, I'm not really into into that anymore. You know, uh, let's see, as Kate says, what would you have done if you were in New York on 9-11? I probably would have gotten into some trouble, because I would have tried to get to the Wall Street Center to take photos. Of course, as you guys know, as a journalist, I would have done that to, for a lot of reasons, and I'm going to be honest, to make some money, because that's how I make my money. To take pictures of the of what was occurring, try to get close as close as I possibly can, and take pictures of what was going on, that's what I would have done. Uh, at that time, when 9-11 was here, I was doing photography for a newspaper, uh, and I was doing... Um, photography for a newspaper and I was doing graphic design work as well. So I definitely would have tried to use my credentials to get into New York, even if I would have paid for the trip to I would have paid for the trip to New York because I know I got a place to stay. All I got to do is get to New York and I got a place to stay, right? I could stay with my mom. I could stay with tons of cousins. I could stay with tons of friends. So I know I would have had a place to stay. So getting a hotel would have not been a problem for me. But if I was, that's a very good question. SK, I'm going to pin that question because that's very, very, very good question. Uh, so if I was in um, New York at the time of 9-11, that's what I would have done. I would have hopped on a train and I would have gone down somehow 
to uh, Manhattan to take pictures for either myself as as a self, uh, what is it? Oh my God, I'm lost for words. I apologize, guys. Uh, self, uh, <laughs> oh well, I'm gonna skip on to the word. It'll come to me later. As, as a person that works for themselves, I would try to take pictures or pictures for um, my uh, the, the company uh, newspaper that I was working for at that time. I would have tried to go down there and, and take pictures and who knows, maybe win an award from the amazing pictures uh, that I would have took. Um, who knows, right? Who knows? It's probably one of these famous photos that you see in the World Trade uh, Center Memorial would have probably been one of my photos. I don't know. But um, that's what I would have tried to do. So I probably would have gotten a lot of trouble that day, unfortunately. Um, and that's what I would have done. Definitely what I, what I would have done. So good question. Thank you. Thank you very much. SK, you're, as usual, you are on it with good questions. Uh, let's see. Oh, we got someone joined us. Um, Ramjan, Ramjan, thank you for joining the show. And SK says, uh, what's SK's advice for for types of, of care? Uh, let's see. SK says, I think I told you before I, I was in New York when 9-11 happened when I was six. Yeah. Yeah, you would have not been able to do much at six at six years old. Um, yes, I do remember you telling me that. Um, SK. And that, you know, that's got to be horrible, you know. Because I can remember when it comes to events, right, that I'm trying to think that are equal to 9-11 or that were... Not equal, let me not say equal to 9-11 because someone's gonna, I'm going to piss somebody off by saying that. Not equal as 9-11, uh, I retract that. But events that were important when I was a kid that would have shaped a kid's mind at six years old. I would have to say it was the death of Martin Luther King. Even though it happened before I was born. Martin Luther King, I believe, died in 64. I was born in 67. But I'm saying these are the events that shape it. Uh, the death of uh, Malcolm X, which I believe occurred in 19... No, I think... Uh, let me take that back. I believe MLK, MLK happened in 63. Malcolm X happened in 64. And I believe that... Uh, JFK happened, and his brother Robert happened, uh, I would probably have to say in 63 is somewhere, in 62 or 63 as well. And those have to be the things to me that shaped. Because as a kid growing up, I remember, I used to live on Habit Avenue, okay guys, in 174th Street in the Bronx. I think they're called... The Westchester Apartments, I think, is what they're called. Kennedy was 63. Thank you. Oh, wow. I, I hit that. I hit that good. What about the other ones, SK? What about Malcolm X? Was I right on that? 64, I think. And MLK, which I believe was also 63. Um, yeah, I said 62, 63 for Kennedy. I don't know. What about his brother, Robert, too? Um, when did that occur? But... I can remember living in the projects, like I said, and what they would do was all day on his birthday, blast speeches from Mal from uh, Malcolm X and speeches from um, from MLK on their birthdays, and I can, I do remember a few JFKs as well, but not as popular because those projects were were mostly African Americans, so they wanted to hear their leaders speaking. Um, and nothing wrong with that. MLK was, oh, wait a minute. Really? I got it all wrong. MLK was 67. Now, okay, so you can see how, that's exactly what I was talking about. So MLK was 67, I was born in, I mean, 68, I was born in 63. Uh, 
I mean, oh, I'm sorry. Let me start again. I'm okay with 68. I was born in 67. So you can see how, how years after his life, they were still doing all his speeches. Uh, and that's one thing that I do remember. Uh, and MLK was 65. Wow, silly me. I thought Martin Luther King went first before Malcolm X. If you guys, uh, I spoke recently with the director of, uh, there's a film called Who Killed Malcolm X? You guys should see it. It's on Netflix, I believe. Uh, if not, if it's not on Netflix, look it up. It's on it's on one of the streaming services. Who killed Malcolm X? New information was is put out there as to who who exactly and what exactly went went down when Malcolm X died, and that's really a shame uh, to me. All these great leaders dying, but I didn't know Martin Luther King was so late, and I thought so. I really, I uh, really got to pay attention. I thought that Martin Luther King went first and then Malcolm X. But according to SK, SK's information, um, Malcolm went first. And that's very interesting because I didn't know that that's how it was. But yeah, those are things that I remember. So for me, as a kid, and you know, you could have different ones and I would love to know what they are. These are the things that shaped me, you know, as 9-11 shaped uh, SK's life and probably shaped a lot of young kids his age. The, the, the assassinations of these four men, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, JFK, and RFK, Robert Kennedy, his brother, were things that shaped my life, the tragedies that shaped my life. Um, so that's very interesting. I would wonder, I would like to wonder, I'd like to know if anyone else has, um, any, any, um, other, uh, tragedies that might have shaped their lives. Uh, SK says, I think the most tragedy, most tragic U.S. events were Lincoln's assassination, JFK's assassination, WW1, WW2, Malcolm X's, I mean, uh, MLK's assassination, Malcolm X's assassination, and 9-11. Wow. Wow, I'm trying to think, of, was there another one? Is there another one? Uh, no, I think you're right, that might have, that might have been it. But I do, I would add uh, RFK on, onto that for sure. Uh, because um, I don't know what year, he, let's see what year he passed away. Uh, RFK. Uh, okay. 68. Okay, so RFK was 68. When did you say JFK was? Did you say JF? Did you give the year? Do you remember? Oh yeah, you said 63. Okay, so 63. So JFK 63, RFK 68. So then again, you see, there you go. June 6, by the way, for those of you that are wondering. June 6. There you go. Um, That's... Uh, yes, thank you, SK says. The... Um, Oh, Rodney King. That's a good one, too. Tully, that is, that is a good one. Thank you, Tully. Yeah, RFK, because um, I can remember as a kid. Let, let, first of all, let's see what year this was so I can kind of put my head around when when this happened. Uh, Rodney King. Hopefully just writing Rodney King would be enough. I'll have enough, it'll give me enough information. Oops. Uh, Rodney King, here we are. Oops, that's, nope. That's his Facebook account. Don't want the Facebook account because I'm not going to get any information. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to write it all in. Uh, when 
uh, Rodney King get all right sorry about the long wait guys I know I hate those two but let's see all right African man who was a victim of police brutality on March 3rd wow one day before my birthday guys March 3rd uh and that's all the information I got. I don't got a year. Come on. Slow internet. Okay. March 3rd, 1991. Okay. 1991. I was living in Las Vegas. Okay. Um, okay. So I met my daughter's mom in 95. So my daughter wasn't born. Okay. So now it gives me a better idea. Uh, yeah, I would say that some kid, if you were five years old, six years old, even ten, around the time when um, when Rodney King was beat up, Rodney Glenn King, by the way, um, you you would that would be a significant thing because as me as a kid, I thought okay for sure, now police brutality brutality, excuse me, is going to get addressed and it's going to stop because now we have it on video. And you have to remember, here I am. I've already, at, in, by 91, I witnessed my uncle get beat up by New York City police. Uh, so I witnessed that. Or, I mean, I didn't witness the beating, but I witnessed, I remember how my uncle looked uh, in photos. I only saw photos as a kid. My my family thought they hit him well. Uh, photos of my uncle getting beat up. And once again, it doesn't matter what my uncle did. You know, some people say, well, maybe your uncle was doing... It doesn't matter what my uncle was doing. Okay, it doesn't matter. You know, he doesn't deserve to get beat up. You arrest him, right? You, you handcuff him and you put him in the car and then he, he goes to trial and that's it. He just doesn't... You know, so many people are really so pissed off. Even when it comes to bullying, when it comes to bullying, so many people go, well, maybe he was bullied at the workplace because he didn't do a good job. Or maybe he was bullied at the school because he was weird. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter why you're bullying the person. You, there's no excuse for bullying. If you don't like the clothes he wears, you don't like the music he likes, you don't like the color of his skin, you don't like that he might be gay, you don't like that he the religion that he is doesn't give you an excuse to bully or beat up a person. Okay, and that's what some police officers don't understand. Well, he's, you know, like I told you, I told you guys, I had a friend who almost went to jail for a very long time. Thank God he, he, um, he put out a, a Craigslist uh, post asking anybody were they in this area at this time uh, that might have witnessed his arrest. And thank God there was a guy who was filming it and he was able to use that footage to keep himself out of jail. He was an Asian uh, friend of mine. And, you know, thank God or he would have been in jail for a long time for assaulting an officer when he didn't even assault an officer. Police officers have to stop doing this. You know, it, uh, you don't, you know, like I, I realize it. You know, a lot of people tell me that, you know, cops get spit on. I totally understand that. But if I'm patrolling an area and someone says, hey, I got to go down this street, and my job is to make sure no one goes down that street because there's a dead body on that street. Sorry, you got to keep driving. And that person spits at me. That does not give me the right to, you know, punch him so hard that he dies or punch him so hard that he loses sight in his eye because I punched him in the eye. That that doesn't matter. And some of these police officers don't don't agree on that. If you assault an officer, you deserve to get assaulted back. And that's that's not how it is. Unfortunately, if you don't like that, don't 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 take the job. If you feel that, oh, if someone assaults me, I have the right to assault them. No. Someone has the right if someone pulls a gun on you, then yes, police officers have the right to defend themselves any way they can in that aspect. But to shoot someone 
and then plant a gun on them, they don't have the right to do that. And unfortunately, that's what occurs all too often. SK says, the marathon bombing, the Boston Marathon bombing, for me, and um, this doesn't mean I'm not sensitive of the situation, but for me, uh, the bombing wasn't really, I mean, I remember where I was at. I remember uh, things like that, like I remember 9-11, but it's not one of those 9-11 things for me. You know, that's just me. But it could be, you know, I got friends from Boston. Definitely could be something that's important to them. Irfan Yemaz, thank you for joining the show. Uh, SK also goes on to say, I think the Boston Marathon bombing was another tragic event, but that was 2013, I think. Okay. I was going to ask you if, you if you knew what it was. But, um, yeah, so to go back to the what started all the police brutality was the uh, Rodney King by S, um, sorry, not SK, by Tully. And yeah, and I can remember as a kid thinking to myself, okay, now my, my uncle's going to get justice for him being beat up by those cops. They're going to they're gonna start coming down on cops and restricting, I mean, and really taking situations where people come hurt to the pre they, they weren't hurt. It was a peaceful uh, arrest, but by the time they get to the precinct, they have a broken arm, and that occurs a lot. It wasn't a hard arrest. It was a very simple, peaceful arrest, but by the time he, he gets to the police station, he's got a bloody nose and a black eye. How, when does that happen? Uh, NYPD is the biggest police force in the world, says SK. Yeah, and it's probably the most corrupt. I would have to say. Uh, let's see. Tully says, Rodney King's case was the the direct trigger response for L.A. riots. Right. Yep. Uh, definitely. Well, um, let me see. Let me see what he says. Uh, Rodney King case. Yeah, the, the verdict. When the verdict was read and those cops got off, that's definitely. Because like I said, millions and millions of people... Hey, Maddie, there's a name we haven't saw in a while. What's up, Maddie? Millions and millions of people thought that finally justice for everyone's police brutality, my uncles, everyone's, the time that I was pulled over by police, I told you guys this, and the police officer threatened me to not hang out with my white friend anymore. You know, I wasn't racist. I had white friends, black friends, orange friends, green friends. I had all types of friends. Uh, but it's always seemed to happen that when I was hanging around with white friends, some police officer will always have something to say, you know, and that's a shame. Maddie, good to see you, bud. Uh, but, you know, it's, I'm, I'm real good, Maddie. How about yourself? It's been a while. How about yourself? What are you up to? It refresh my memory. You are from the UK, right? How are things in the UK? You might not know this, uh, Maddie, but I now live in Europe. I don't live in the South Pacific anymore. I live, so you and I are in the same time zone. If this is the Maddie that I'm thinking of that lives in the UK, you and I are in the same time, time zone now. Just thought I would share that with you because that's how long it's been since we talked. In fact, I just, on the 23rd, just celebrated with my family a year of living in Europe. Uh, you can check out that episode in our IGTV channel. Be sure to check it out, please. But um, yeah, we covered a lot of stuff. We covered a lot of stuff. And again, Tully and SK having some great questions, some awesome questions about um. Uh, the topic, not the topic that we were talking about, but it's always the second topic on our shows, right? I mean, it's an hour-long show. We could have two topics, nothing wrong with that. Uh, Maddie says, uh, I'm right now, COVID is still a bit bad, and yes, I live in the in the UK. You know, that's one thing I have to say. And before I say this, I have a lot of dear friends in the UK. I have a lot of dear friends in... Um, in Australia, 
lots of de dear friends, lots and lots and lots of dear friends. So this is not anything to them. I have a lot of followers that are from the UK and that are um, in Australia. So this is not anything negative towards you. This is more negative towards the American uh, media, the American media. You see recently on the, on the news that a bunch of Haitians were seeking asylum in America because of the earthquake, because of the negative things with um, that are going on in Haiti. And it is a constitutional, let me tell you this, it's, a, it's against the constitution that if someone comes into America asking for asylum, that you send them back to their country. Because if it's, they can be killed. You know, it's as simple as that. Uh, and they sent back planes. Uh, I know of one plane, but I'm assuming that there's a bunch of plane loads of Haitians back to Haiti. They sent them back, which was wrong. Okay. And when COVID occurred, all you saw all on the American news was how bad China was for creating, and I say that in quotes, creating the the virus. You know, but there's one thing I know that there were parts of Australia, parts of UK, and again, this is not any shot towards my friends that are currently on lockdown, and I have yet to find this on the news. Yet to find this on the news. I'm going to let you guys tell me why that is. So write it in the comments. Why do you think a bunch of Haitians come to the U.S. and that's all over the news. They send them back. That's all over the news. But the U.K. Uh, uh, is uh, things are bad with the COVID. Some parts of Australia things are bad with the COVID. And I've yet. I have me. I'm just saying me. I'm not saying that they have American um, news has not reported on it. Thank you for smashing that heart, everyone. Whether you're watching this live or recorded, smash that heart. I'm not saying that. I'm, the, I'm not saying that they haven't. I'm just saying that I have not seen any news reports saying how bad... Um, it is. And when COVID first started and Italy was doing bad, everyone was doing bad. Not just Italy, but you saw all over the news how Italy is, you know, how bad they are for having everything wrong. I don't think that's fair to when, you know, when the COVID started, I don't think it's fair to say any country is not is not doing anything right. Because this is the first time we've We've dealt with this, right? I mean, I don't. The last time we dealt with something this serious was when it was influenza, right? When we had influenza in the 1920s, I think that was, or 1921, it was influenza. Uh, so we haven't really dealt. I could probably say my generation, okay, and I was born. I'm probably the oldest one right now on this on this channel. I would think. There's, I don't think I have anyone older. I'm probably the oldest person within the followers and everything, right? Uh, and I've never dealt with anything like this. So it's hard to say that these people, that China's not doing their job. This Nobody, you know, in the beginning, two, two years ago, right? Or whatever it was when COVID first started. No, you can't say this person's not doing their job, right? That person's not. We're all new to this. So, but... I heard nothing but negative things about how Italy is handling, how China is handling, how Japan handled it, how, uh, what's the other, Korea, any South American country, how they handled it. You know, you saw, you heard all these negative things, but you never heard of how America was doing it. There are people dying in America right now, and you don't see that on the news. There uh and like I said, I can't find anything about the UK. I can't find anything about Australia being on lockdown. Why is that? You tell me, guys. I don't know. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Maddie says, I'm all right. Oh, I read that one. Sorry about that. And Maddie says, yeah. So Maddie agrees with me. Yeah, it's like, 
you know, these, the UK, Australia, not, you hear nothing negative about the fact that they're still in, in COVID situation. Italy, they can say, the American media can say whatever they want. No, Italy is handling this right. Like I told you guys a couple of days ago, they have this card now. I mean, not a card. It's all on the internet. But they're calling it a green pass. And what it is, is if you go to a restaurant or if you go to a department store, this department store has the right to ask you if you've had the, the COVID or if you have not got the shot. You don't have to have the shot, but you've had to have taken a COVID test within the past 48 hours, I believe. And if you do not have a negative COVID test or proof that you took your shot, you're not allowed to eat in the restaurant or you're not allowed in the store to shop. And I think that's great. And I think they should bring that to America. Because somebody the other day, uh, one of my friends told me, you know, I don't want to take the COVID shot. And when I say friends, these are friends that I'm not hanging out with physically. I'm telling you that right now. I am not hanging out physically with any family members, with any friends who have not taken uh, their vaccine, period. Because I'm not going to go and say, okay, good, you want to hang out with me? Tomorrow, go take a test, and if you come up positive, then I'll hang out with you. No, I'm not hanging out with you, period. Because you're a knucklehead. You know, it's just, and it's really funny because people are like, oh my God, but those are your family members. I wouldn't hang out with a family member who was doing drugs. If I had a family member that was every day getting dr- doing drugs or got a DUI, I wouldn't get in the car with him. This is the same situation. I wouldn't get in the car with someone that, uh, or hang out with someone that does drugs, heavy drugs. Um, I wouldn't hang out with someone that's got DUI. I wouldn't get in the car with them. Nope, I'm not doing that. So why is this any different? People are trying to make this as different. No, my safety comes first. So if you're not taking the, the shot, you're not hanging with me, period. It's as simple as that. And I have told a few uh, family members and, and friends that, and they got upset. And it's like, get upset. You know, why is your life more important than mine? That's the way I look at it. That's what these people don't understand. I don't want to get the vaccine. Okay, fine. I, then my life's important. I'm not hanging out with you. You have your right to say I'm not, I'm not getting the vaccine. And I have the right to say I'm not hanging with you, period. Just like if forget COVID, if it was drinking, I went, I went drinking with, with a cousin, let's say, or an uncle or whatever. All of a sudden, he's like, hey, get in the car. I'll drive you home. No, I'll take the bus or I'll walk. No, 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 I'll drive you home. No, I'm not getting in the car. Why? You just had too much to drink. I'm not getting in the car with you. It's the same situation. All right, let's see here. We got some. Uh, Tully says, must have left. I can't see comments. Okay. And Maddie says, so where exactly in Europe are you? I am uh, Toscana, 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 or in English is pronounced Tuscany. And uh, my wife works on the base here. And my battery is dying. I do not want to lose this great episode, guys. So we're going to have to bring this to an end. Uh, but I'll read the last comments that came up. Tully says, my hospital is getting a COVID vaccine mand- mandatory. Great. If you don't get it, you can't come to work. Terrific. Great idea. Every place should do that. So but let me tell you real quick what I was telling you. So my friend said, it 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 takes away from my freedoms to get the vaccine. And I told him, okay, what freedoms did you lose? Do you have your gun? You have a gun. I know you have a gun. Do you still have your gun? Right. Okay. What freedoms did you lose? Are you still voting? You're, you're still voting, right? That that wasn't taken away from you, right? Thank you for smashing the heart, everyone. So you're still allowed to vote. You, you're still, you know, you're still allowed to work, right? No freedoms were taken away from you. This reminds me of the situation when people say, uh, freedom of speech. You know, people want to say, the hell with black people, the hell with Hispanics, the hell, the hell with Jews, the hell with with whatever, the hell with women. They want to say all this and don't say that. And you, they say to you, no, 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 that's freedom of speech. I have the right. It's freedom of speech to say, no, you don't have the right to speak um, hatred, 
freedom of speech is so that if you don't like the job that Biden is doing, or if you didn't like the job, Kenzie, thank you for joining the show. If you didn't like the job that uh, Trump was doing, you're allowed to say these guys are doing a terrible job. Because years ago, if you said that to the king, that the king was doing a bad job, you would end up dead. So these were created, freedom of speech was created for that. So you can say this guy's doing a horrible job, that guy's doing a horrible job. But you don't have the right to say we should get rid of all of these groups of people. We should get rid of all of these groups of people. You don't have the right to say that. So thank you for joining the show. Thank you for smashing that heart. Mackenzie, thank you for coming on. Smash that heart, guys, whether you're watching this live or recording. I want to remind you guys that live feed is brought to you by Traveling Tech Teacher. E.C. Kelly's Yoga Revolution on YouTube and Nonfiction Filmmaker. Um, and also brought to you by Kick underscore Keep, uh, keep It Kind. Kick underscore Keep It Kind. And also brought to you by TheBullyExposed.com. We remind you to um, be kind to one another, guys. It's as simple as that. Okay, anyone can wear a crown. Anyone can be a hero. One another and have a great day. Bye.